My name is Ross Stimson. I'm the medical lead for Colon Check Manitoba. Today I'd like to talk to you about colorectal cancer and uh, polyps. I'd like to present some information on polyps and uh, also provide surveillance recommendations when uh, dealing with uh, polyps in your patients. These are my objectives of the talk today. First of all, I'd like to give an overview and on the, uh, colorectal cancer and diagnosis. I'd like to talk about the benefits of screening and polyp detection. We'll talk a bit about uh, polyp uh, management and surveillance. We'll also talk about the influence of family history on screening and surveillance uh, intervals. I'd also like to introduce our new resource from Colon Check Manitoba entitled Colorectal Polyp Information and Surveillance uh, Recommendations. This is a new resource that we have which is designed to help endoscopists as well as family practitioners use the proper screening intervals when uh, follow-up on patients, er, patients and polyps is needed. Quick overview of colorectal cancer. In this year in Manitoba, upwards of 970 people will likely be diagnosed with colorectal cancer. A significant portion, up to 30 to 35 percent, will likely die from the disease. Of note, 94 percent of cases are found in people greater than 50 years of age. This is a disease which tends to increase in, uh, in uh, frequency with, uh, with aging. Of note, colorectal cancer is treated successfully 90% of the time when it's detected in the earliest stages. And randomized controlled trials have shown that regular screening with a fetal alcohol blood test, as we use in the colon check program, can reduce mortality from colorectal cancer by up to 25%. Colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer in men and women, behind uh, lung and prostate in men, behind lung and breast in uh, women. It's also the second commonest cause of cancer death in women and men, there's a lifetime risk of 1 in 14 to 1 in 15 of getting the disease. These are some of the risk factors associated with, with uh, colorectal cancer. Age, uh, particularly, is probably the highest risk factor. Uh, the disease tends to be found more commonly uh, in Western cultures and Caucasians. A family history of colorectal cancer in a uh, close family members, such as a first-degree relative, increases the risk, as well as a history of advanced adenomas in close family members. People who've had cancer in the past or adenomatous polyps are also at increased risk of getting colorectal cancer. Individuals who've received abdominal radiation for other malignancies have an increased risk of cancer. Also, with long-standing uh, Crohn's or ulcerative uh, colitis, particularly when pancolitis is uh, is present. There's an increased incidence of colorectal cancer, and these individuals require uh, surveillance for uh, cancer detection. There are several uh, genetic syndromes which predispose to colorectal cancer. Uh, familial uh, polyposis, uh, where numerous uh, polyps, adenomatous polyps, are found throughout the colon. Uh, basically. Uh, imparts a, almost a 100% lifetime risk of developing cancer. Um, hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer or Lynch syndrome has a 70% risk of uh, development of colorectal cancer in any given individual. Survival uh, is related to the disease stage and age. Overall, the five-year survival is around 60%. With localized disease or early disease, however, the survival is much greater close to 90%. With distance spread, however, uh, less than 10% of uh, people uh, will survive the disease. When we're speaking about colorectal cancer, we're really talking about adenocarcinoma. This occurs throughout the colon itself, as well as the uh, rectum. The lesions that occur in typical cancer are adenocarcinomas of the uh, colon. Essentially, the lesions are histologically the same in the rectum, uh, as well as throughout the rest of the colon. The behavior in the rectum, however, <coughs> is somewhat different given its unique anatomic uh, location. A few simple distinctions. When we're talking about diagnosis of colorectal cancer, we're talking about the identification of disease in symptomatic individuals. When we talk about screening, we're talking about the identification of cancer or polyps in asymptomatic individuals. That is, we want to find cancer earlier than we would in clinical practice before people present with symptoms. And when we talk about surveillance, we're talking about appropriate follow-up of high-risk individuals who are known to have cancer, polyps, or other diseases which predispose them to cancer and place them at increased risk. What are some of the common signs and symptoms of uh, colorectal cancer? 
these tend to vary somewhat depending when we're whether we're looking at cancers originating from the left colon or the right colon. In the left colon, very often the symptoms are more related to obstruction. Obstruction can occur with uh, reduced bowel movements, decrease in the size of bowel movements, or sometimes diarrhea. With distal lesions in the colon, this can present as rectal pain and tenesmus. Also, frank rectal bleeding is more common with left-sided colon cancers showing as hematochesia. In the right colon, uh, lesions tend to bleed more, and individuals are more likely to present with uh, low hemoglobin or iron deficiency uh, anemia. Abdominal pain, or the presence of a mass or abdominal tenderness, is fairly common in colorectal cancer, though this often portends a more advanced stage of the uh, disease. Of note, all symptoms should be investigated uh, urgently, and colonoscopy, of course, is the, is the diagnostic procedure of a choice. Individuals who refuse colonoscopy, CT colonoscopy could be, CT colonography could be an option. Colorectal cancers are also found through screening. Screening can take the form of uh, fecal alcohol blood testing, or in some instances, uh, colonoscopy. If the uh, individual is deemed to be at high risk, and colonoscopy is seen to be a better test, there's also uh, patients who present at a late stage of their disease or present emergently with complications of their cancers, such as bowel obstruction, perforation and peritonitis, massive bleeding, or in other advanced cases, ascites or metastatic disease. This picture just shows a typical uh, lesion in the colon, which is quite a typical adenocarcinoma of the colon. What are some of the benefits of screening? When we're screening individuals for colorectal cancer, we hope to diagnose colorectal cancer at an earlier stage. Diagnosing uh, cancer at early stage reduces colorectal cancer uh, mortality. It also simplifies treatment, reduces the need for uh, adjuvant therapies such as radiation therapy or chemotherapy. In effect, we're hoping to create a stage shift where rather than diagnosing cancers at late stage, such as three or four, we want to diagnose cancers at earlier stages, uh, stage one and two. Also, screening can detect polyps. Back in 1993, a study was done uh, the national, by the National Polyp Study uh, Work Group, which showed that um, with uh, polypectomy, there was a reduced incidence of cancer, which was quoted as high as 76 to 90 percent compared to a control population who were never had polyps removed. This slide shows the various stages of colorectal cancer. When we talk about stage zero, we're really just talking about the presence of abnormal cells in the colon. Stage zero uh, basically equates to what was previously described as uh, carcinoma in situ or intramucosal carcinoma. Nowadays we call this uh, high-grade uh, dysplasia. This is uh, a stage at which there is no actual invasive cancer. Stage one, the cancer has grown into the inner wall of the colon or rectum, and stage two, it's grown through the wall of the uh, colon or rectum. Stage three cancers have spread to the lymph nodes, and of course, stage four cancers are metastatic lesions which have spread to other parts of the body. The goal in screening, of course, is to detect cancers when they're most curable at early stages, such as zero and one. In 2016 in Canada, the Canadian Task Force on Preventative Health Care came out with uh, recommendations. They basically advised screening individuals 50 to 74 years of age using fecal alcohol blood testing, either using a GUIAC FOBT or GFOBT, or a FIT, a fecal immunotest. They advise screening every two years or flexible sigmoidoscopy uh, every uh, 10 years. They also recommended against screening individuals 75 years of uh, age of older. This is because there was questionable uh, benefit in an older age group where there's other significant comorbidities which could shorten their life. Of important note, however, in average risk individuals, they recommended not using colonoscopy as a screening test for colorectal cancer. This is not to say that colonoscopy is not an adequate tool for screening. It is, however, a costly uh, test. Uh, there is risks associated with it. And on a programmatic basis, it is believed that for the most part, people would not agree to colonoscopy as a screening test for colorectal cancer as opposed to, say, a fecal alcohol blood test. This was an interesting study performed in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2009. This looked at the estimation of colorectal cancer death 
after colonoscopy for individuals who underwent complete uh, colonoscopies. An odds ratio was developed, which looked at the chances of developing colorectal cancer compared to individuals who had never had uh, colonoscopy. An odds ratio of zero would provide complete protection, whereas an odds ratio of one meant that there was no, uh, no protection or prevention afforded by the uh, colonoscopy. As you can see here, even with individuals with left-sided uh, lesions, the reduction and the chances of colorectal cancer death was about 67% reduction, or 100 minus 33. Very little uh, reduction in the chance of colorectal cancer death was afforded generally for cancers throughout the uh, colon, mostly in the range of about 37%. For right-sided lesions, there was essentially no protective effect of a colonoscopy. It's interesting what the reasons for this might be. Very often the bowel preparation is worse in the right colon. The lesions tend to be uh, flatter. There may be uh, more serrated adenomas in the right colon. We tend to know now that these lesions are the type of lesions which are uh, probably lead to cancer and probably progress to cancer quicker than most other types of polyps. Also, uh, it is much more difficult to negotiate and examine the uh, right side of the colon. Some quick facts about uh, fecal local blood testing. Uh, the detection depends on blood loss. Bleeding tends to be greater with uh, cancers, advanced adenomas, or more advanced type of uh, polyps that have worsening uh, dysplasia. These tend to bleed more in simple lesions, such as tubular adenoma. <clears throat> we also know that we have improved detection of uh, polyps or cancer with multiple samples, uh, frequent intervals, and also when we use a lower threshold for the detection of blood. Most guaiac tests have a uh, threshold of 300 nanograms per gram of stool, where with some of the newer fecal immunotesting, the uh, threshold goes down to 50 nanograms. Of note, all positives require colonoscopy. What's the natural history of polyps and cancer? For the most part, we believe that most cancers arise from one of two pathways. The common pathway is probably the adenomatous polyp to adenocarcinoma pathway. This likely accounts for the uh, majority of uh, cancers. It takes approximately 10 years for a polyp to progress to a cancer. Uh, this is a, what we determine as to be the latent period for this. <coughs> this is very important, and this is one of the reasons why colorectal cancer is one of the best lesions uh, to screen for. If we can detect uh, polyps at an early stage and remove them, we can pre prevent colorectal uh, cancer. The risk of cancer in any given polyp increases with the size of the polyp, the degree of dysplasia in it, as well as the uh, villus content. And what happens in these polyps is they undergo progressive growth, increase in size, and uh, increasing in dysplasia. High-grade dysplasia is actually what used to be referred to as carcinoma in situ, and this is the first stage prior to invasive carcinoma. A second pathway is referred to as a serrated adenoma pathway. Uh, this is thought possibly to be a faster uh, progression uh, to cancer than the uh, precursor adenomatous polyp adenocarcinoma pathway. And this involves two types of uh, lesions, sessile serrated uh, adenomas or sessile serrated polyps, as they're sometimes referred to, and also traditional serrated adenomas. This is what we're really are after when we're trying to prevent cancer. We like to see a polyp here, in this case a pedunculated polyp that's easy to remove by snaring a colonoscope snare around the bottom of the polyp and removing it completely before it's able to undergo dysplastic changes and possibly progress to cancer. This is a classification of uh, colorectal polyps. Basically they can be def divided into neoplastic polyps which have a definite malignant uh, potential. This includes our conventional adenomas and aden or adenomatous polyps and serrated adenomas. And then we have a series of non-neoplastic polyps, such as hyperplastic polyps and other types of polyps, such as hamartomas, inflammatory polyps, and lymphoid polyps. These non-neoplastic polyps are not of any concern and have no uh, true malignant uh, risk. As I'll talk about later, some hyperplastic polyps cannot readily be be distinguished from sessile serrated adenomas, particularly in the right colon, and are often designated as sessile serrated polyps in that circumstance. 
they should be treated like sessile serrated adenomas. For conventional adenomas, we have tubular adenomas and then tubular villus and villus adenomas. Tubular villus and villus adenomas have varying degrees of uh, villus content in them. The more villus content, usually the higher risk the uh, polyp is. Uh, serrated adenomas are much less common. Sessile serrated uh, adenomas are typically found in the, in the right side of the colon and are often flat lesions. And these are often hard to detect with the colonoscope. This may be one of the reasons why colonoscopy has such a poor effect in preventing uh, cancers in the uh, right colon even after complete colonoscopy. Traditional serrated adenomas are more commonly found in the uh, left colon and more often appear to be a pedunculated lesion, though they're not that common. All colorectal adenomas have a risk of malignant transformation. This is, can be related to the actual type of adenoma. Serrated adenomas probably have a higher risk of malignant transformation. The presence of villous content in conventional adenomatous polyps imparts an increased risk of malignant transformation. Polyps over one centimeter in size are thought also to be at higher risk of malignant transformation, whereas all types of conventional adenomatous polyps have low-grade dysplasia with the onset of high-grade uh, dysplasia, or what used to be referred to as intraepithelial carcinoma, uh, the risk of invasion is high, and these lesions require complete removal. Also, the number of polyps is important. Uh, individuals with large number of polyps, uh, you're more likely to miss these polyps when you do a colonoscopy, and also there's a question about whether they can be completely removed, and therefore, there's a higher risk of recurrent uh, polyps. Also, with very large number of polyps, it is possible there is a genetic etiology to some of these individuals in terms of their cancer risk. This is a picture of uh, what would appear to be a typical uh, tubular uh, adenoma of the uh, colon. This uh, slide shows a, uh, a villus lesion of the uh, colon. These tend to be more uh, sessile in shape and uh, flatter and often uh, involve a larger surface area of the uh, colon. They are often more difficult to remove because of this. This uh, picture shows uh, a polypectomy performed through a colonoscope. A loop is placed around the uh, neck of the polyp, which is right here. After uh, tightening the noose and applying cautery, the polyp is removed and the polyp is retrieved for pathological examination. Sometimes you will see the term high-risk adenomas uh, used. This includes advanced adenomas, as well as individuals who have uh, greater than two uh, adenomas in their colon. Uh, advanced adenomas include adenomas which are greater than one centimeter in size, those that have villus content, such as villus and tubular villus, as well as ones with high-grade dysplasia. All these features uh, place an individual patient at increased uh, risk and, an increased, and therefore they need increased uh, surveillance in terms of their polyp surveillance. So these, so these are some of the recommendations for conventional adenomatous uh, polyps. The commonest uh, pulp that we see is the tubular adenoma. Uh, in the absence of any low-grade dysplasia and a small size polyp less than one centimeter in size, the usual interval after complete removal would be five to 10 years. When we look at high-risk adenomas, that is individuals with uh, three polyps, adenomas are greater, and advanced adenomas with uh, villus or tubular villus components greater than a centimeter in size or high-grade dysplasia, the colonoscopy or surveillance interval, interval should be three years. When we look at serrated adenomas, sessile serrated adenoma, less than one centimeter of size and no dysplasia, repeat uh, colonoscopy should be performed at uh, five years. Here I've designated a serrated adenoma or polyp. Very often in the right side of the uh, colon, it can be difficult to distinguish a hyperplastic polyp from a uh, sessile serrated uh, adenoma. Here you will often see the term sessile serrated uh, polyp uh, used. These lesions should be treated as sessile serrated adenomas when they are present in the, uh, in the right colon or proximal to the uh, splenic flexure. A sessile serrated adenoma or polyp which is greater than a centimeter in size or is presence of dysplasia, repeat colonoscopy should be performed in three years. Traditional serrated adenomas often already have uh, dysplasia, and they can also be referred to as advanced adenomas when they have high-grade dysplasia. 
These lesions are at high risk for uh, malignant transformation and repeat colonoscopy should be performed at three years. This diagram here is put here just to show the different morphologies of uh, polyps that you can see. And this also accounts for some of the reasons why polyp removal is quite often incomplete or polyps recur after they have been previously uh, removed. Obviously a polyp on a stalk is much easier to remove than one which is uh, flat, sessile, or encompasses a fairly large surface area on the, uh, on the uh, colon. So when we're looking at our polyp surveillance intervals, we make several assumptions. These intervals are valid as long as we have a complete examination to the uh, cecum, the bowel preparation is adequate such that we can do a detailed examination, and we have complete excision of the uh, adenomas. Complete excision can be in question at times, particularly when we're dealing with large polyps, or when a polyp is quite large and it has to be removed in a piecemeal fashion, that is, uh, one piece or part of it at a time. Also, we are assuming that all adenomas have previously uh, been removed. If we can't satisfy these criteria, you may have to opt for an earlier surveillance interval than the ones that I've stated. This slide shows two of the commonest types of uh, polyps found in the colon. On the left here, we have a typical small hyperplastic polyp. These are typically found in the uh, left colon and upper uh, rectum. Hyperplastic polyps in themselves do not have any uh, malignant uh, potential. On the right here, we see a typical uh, pedunculated adenomatous polyp. This is a type of polyp that can be easily snared and removed for histological examination. In particular, when examining polyps, the pathologist looks for evidence of high-grade uh, dysplasia or early invasive uh, cancer. As a, as a rule, the appearance of a polyp is not predictive of the histological type. Therefore, almost all polyps need to be removed and examined uh, histologically in order to determine uh, future management and surveillance. This slide here shows a schematic of uh, a colon with a large number of uh, polyps as seen in familial adenomatous uh, polyposis. In these situations, there can be uh, hundreds or even in some cases thousands of adenomatous polyps throughout the uh, uh, colon. Typically, uh, this just starts in the early years, usually starting in the uh, teens. It's associated with an autosomal dominant trait and associated with the uh, APC uh, gene. Given uh, long enough, the lifetime risk of cancer is close to uh, 100 uh, percent. Uh, when screening for this in family members, the screening should usually start in the uh, teens. Uh, generally, uh, the treatment is uh, surgery, and most patients will under be eventually be undergoing uh, surgical treatment for removal of the colon. A few things about hyperplastic polyps. Uh, hyperplastic polyp is a serrated polyp though it is not a serrated adenoma for the most part. Hyperplastic polyps are generally found in the uh, left side of the uh, colon. A true hyperplastic polyp has no risk of, of malignant transformation. However, when hyperplastic polyps are reported proximally in the colon, that is proximal to the uh, splenic flexure, it may be difficult to distinguish these from serrated adenomas. And very often they're labeled as uh, serrated uh, polyps. In this circumstance, if they are, they should be treated as sessile serrated adenomas in terms of surveillance. There's a very interesting uh, syndrome called sessile serrated polyposis syndrome. This is characterized by large numbers of polyps without, throughout the uh, colon, which are uh, serrated polyps. These are the criteria for diagnosis. Any individual with greater than five proximal uh, serrated polyps, two of which are greater than a centimeter, uh, individuals who have uh, serrated polyps with a first-degree relative with serrated polyposis syndrome, or any individual with greater than or equal to 20 serrated polyps throughout the colon has suspect uh, serrated uh, polyposis uh, syndrome. Generally, surveillance intervals in these individuals are suggested to be one year. What's the impact of family history on surveillance intervals? History of a first-degree relative with colorectal cancer imparts a greater risk of developing colorectal uh, cancer into the future. Or if a relative has an advanced adenomatous polyp, this probably imparts the same risk of cancer. When individuals have, who are first-degree relatives have a history of colorectal cancer or advanced polyps, this should be taken into account when determining surveillance intervals. 
One first degree relative diagnosed with colorectal cancer or advanced adenoma polyps, 60 years of age or older, should have colonoscopy uh, every uh, 10 years, beginning at age 40 or 10 years earlier than the age of diagnosis of cancer in the family. Similarly, two or more second degree relatives diagnosed with colorectal cancer or advanced polyps should undergo colonoscopy every 10 years. A uh, option in these individuals is average risk screening with FLBT starting at age 40. A higher risk group of individuals are those who have one first degree relative diagnosed with colorectal cancer or advanced adenomatous polyps before the age of 60. These individuals require colonoscopy uh, every five years beginning at age 40 or 10 years earlier than the age of diagnosis of cancer in the family. This also applies to the presence of two or more first-degree relatives diagnosed with colorectal cancer or advanced adenomatous polyps at uh, any age. This should be taken into consideration when providing surveillance for polyps. This is our new uh, colorectal polyp uh, information and uh, surveillance recommendation sheet. Uh, this is a, a two-part sheet. This provides recommendations and, uh, on surveillance for particular types of polyps. It also provides general information on uh, polyps. This can be obtained through Colon Check Manitoba. Thank you very much.